Thanks to Squarespace for supporting Game Breakers. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create a professional website, blog, portfolio, and, and an online store. You guys have checked out that, but that is no easy feat. But Squarespace makes it definitely, definitely easy. Uh, for a free trial and 10% off of your first purchase on new accounts, go head on over to squarespace.com. Use offer code GAMEBREAKER5. What's up, everybody? Welcome to This Week in MMO, episode 1454, May 24th, 2013. You're watching Game Breaker. I'm Gary Gannon. Coming up on today's show, big news for Wildstar fans at Game Breaker. We've got more info about crafting in the Elder Scrolls Online and major, major issues with the Neverwinter. It is not Jason Winter's birthday. Happy birthday, anyway. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm doing fine. Uh, unfortunately, I think my air conditioning might be broken. So, but that's okay. That's okay. It's only in beta. So well, that's uh, my birthday present to you. Okay. Broken air, Happy broken birthday. AC. That's that's broken what you AC. gave me. Happy you birthday. You can go into a card or something. Nope. Just... Break the AC. And joining us from uh, Zam.com, editor in chief, Hawk. Put on pants. No. All right. All right. Don't push me on the pants issue. <laughs> You're pushing me too far, Gannon. I'll sit down, but I'm not going to put on pants. <laughs> I won't cross that line. With your, I've had it up to like, down here with your roots. <laughs> I won't cross that line. I won't. I won't do it. All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome to This Week in MMO. We can talk about some MMOs. MMOs, MMOs. Uh, there is a ton of Wildstar info news this week but just a little bit a little bit uh but i think it's finally gotten to the point uh where the info is just so wild star specific and it's getting so granular and it's so tasty uh it kind of doesn't make sense to cover it right here on the uh this week in mmo so guess what wild star show yep that's it this is tweemo not the wild star show but we will be launching a wild star show this Wednesday. Wild Star Show. Wild Star Show. Coming up this Wednesday, we will be launching a Wild Star Show. We don't have a name yet. We're still debating on a name, so I don't even know. And I don't we, think we Wednesday... have debated long and hard over it, haven't we? Yes, Dom's really fighting for some names. Um, I know he yeah. is, and I'm fighting him against him. So am I. So it's two on one. Don't worry about it. We'll win. We'll win. Um, but uh, I think we're going to do this show. Harder. We're going to launch. No, I'm going to launch on. that show. We're going to launch it. I'm, I'm cutting you off. We're going to launch that show. Um, we're going to launch it on Wednesday, but I don't think Wednesday is going to be the official day. So we, I think the official day that we're going to do the show live is going to be on Mondays. Uh, it's myself and Hawk. Hawk down. Put on pants. Um, it's the two of us. So pants far. walk down. Yes, pants hawk down. Pants hawk dance off. Okay. Um, I think we're going to do the show live on Mondays, but this coming mm -hmm. Monday is a holiday, so we want to get the show out, so we're going to do it on Wednesday, so keep an eye on, uh, out for that. Like I said, we're still debating a name, but you should see a Wildstar show pop up on the Game Breaker TV network this coming Wednesday. Um, we're really hyped. I'm really, really, really hyped for Wildstar. Lots of great info came out this week, and uh, we think it's finally that time. It is time for a weekly Wildstar show. The time has come. The weekly wild star. I don't know if you guys have any, if you guys have any guys. If you guys have any ideas for names? Leave a comment below. We're still looking for a name. We have no idea. I think the only one we kind of like, sort of liked, was the word Nexus. But it seems like everybody out there on the internet's taken. No, there's so there's two or three we like, but there's not one that we all like. <laughs> yeah, there's something to do with some other franchise and boobies. Yes, there, no, there's not that one. There's another one as well that me and Dom talked about, but you didn't like. And then know. there's one that you always sell. liked, but we said no. That's good. And then it was all, anyway, yeah. Next week. Next week. 
Um, if that wasn't enough, I think uh, my our producer hates me. Um, we're going to launch another show next week. What? <laughs> yeah, we're launching another show next week. Two shows next week. We're going to be launching uh, Twimo this week in MMO's little free-to-play brother. That's going to be on Friday. So we're going to be doing this week in MMO, and we're going to be doing um, a free-to-play show. It's like this week in free-to-play, but that's not going to be the name of it. I think we're set on a name for that show. I like pay to win. I like pay to win. I think it's a good name. I think we're going to call it pay to win. It's a good name. It's, it's, a pay to watch. it's, it's evocative. Yeah. I think we're going to call it pay to win. It'll be an all free to play show. It's going to be like this week in MMO, but completely based on free to play games. Um, if you guys haven't seen, we launched a new website called free to play.tv that is now part of the Game Breaker network in addition to Game Breaker.tv. It's not like it is taking over. I think there was some confusion. People going like, what is this new website? It is in addition. Because there's so many free to play games. We wanted to create a place for you guys to go in and check out and find new games. Uh, we're going to be adding a ton of new games to that. There's a lot, obviously, missing, but we, we launched it. But there's a ton of stuff up there already. You know, Neverwinter's up there, Star Wars. We've got overviews. we got good, the bad, the everything. Check it out. It's, there's tons of good stuff. It's free to play.tv. That's where we're going to be covering all the free-to-play stuff. So two new shows next week and more to come. Um, I know everybody's been asking about uh, the Elder Scrolls Online show. I'm hoping that uh, I'm hoping I'm hoping by E3. I'm thinking E3 probably around that time they might you know open up the faucet enough that we feel kind of comfortable. I think that's going to be the time. So that's coming as well. More shows, and then there's going to be like five other shows we're working on. So I'm going to be busy. When's the Final Fantasy 14 show coming back? That's coming back as well. That is. That's coming. Oh God, XIV is coming joking. back. No, I'm not. I think that's coming back. <laughs> PC gaming, XIV, Neverwinter's up in the air. I can't really tell yet. I'm not really sure on Neverwinter. That that one's kind of a flip of a coin right now. I think XIV is going to get a show. I'm not sure. You were joking. I'm serious. I need a box to throw. There you go. It has been a while since you've thrown a box. Shafnet uh, head, Shafnet's head looks in far too good condition lately. <laughs> You it need does. something to bounce off it. So, since we are going to be launching a Wildstar show, we're not going to talk about Wildstar. <laughs> I know there's so much stuff that there's so much good Wildstar <laughs> stuff to talk about, but we're not going to talk about it. Sorry, uh, nope, we are going to save it. Sorry. We're going to save it for the show. Uh, Basically, you know. you're going to come back next week, next week and exactly. watch that show. That there show you that we'll you don't even know the name of. The show. Know what... Someone someone says we should call it someone says we should call it Wildstar One, which which was very funny in chat. Oh the Wild Wildstone? Wildstar One. Yeah, Wild, Wildstone. Wildstone. Yeah. Wildstone. A few of the names that we actually put forward people have suggested in chat as we've been seeing it. So yes. It'll right. have a name by then, I'm sure. We'll yes. Do, yeah. And we'll tell everybody what the name is. So yeah. pay attention. Follow the uh, Facebook and the Twitter and all that good stuff. Uh, oh, oh, oh! One last thing I should. Oh, let me let me show you guys real quick. Let me uh, we get all the plugs out of the way right now. We have so much to talk about. I've been away for so long. I've just got tons of stuff to talk about. Um, here's the new website, free to play TV. Go check it out. Go to free to play TV and uh, to uh, celebrate the launch, we are giving away. A video card, a GTX 670. Yes. Mm, yes, GTX 670. Uh, just come over here. Go to the right side there. And I think you got like seven days left, something like that. There you go, GTX 670. Go over there, you know. Uh, you can go back and uh, go back every single day to increase your chances to win on that. So you can go back and do different things every day to increase your chances to win. But don't miss that. It's on freetoplay.tv. Look on the right-hand side there for free-to-play giveaways. Click on the GTX 670 giveaway, and we are giving that bad boy away. And before everyone asks, I know, chat room's probably not even looking at chat room, but I can almost sense it blowing up. Tell me if I'm wrong. Is it US only? And to that I say, no. It is worldwide. You, Canada. Dis People despite, with different accents can get it too. Despite, despite, despite... If I end up in jail, okay, this is like, if I end up in jail because of you, mm -hmm. not you, not you, Hawk. Chat can room. I have your stuff? Yes, you can have my stuff. I'll give it to you and I'll blame the chat room. Okay, against, cool. ag against the. Sounds uh, like a good deal. <laughs> can I have Shafnit? Yes, you can totally have yes, Shafnit. You can, can have Shafnit. He can be your boy. I bequeath yes. Shafnit to you. I just pass him along. 
There you go. Gary, I'll pass it to me. I'll go. You can have that. Yeah. He's trained in everything. He's, he, he sits down. You put the leash on him. He, he's, he's a good walker. No problem. There's nobody. He heals. It's totally fine. <laughs> Against. He heals? Uh, Can he yeah. No, he wears heels for you. He'll wear heels. Despite. Despite. The advice from our attorneys about doing a worldwide giveaway. I said I want to give away something worldwide. It sucks that we always do US, so we're doing it. I shouldn't be doing it, but we're doing it. Head on over to freetoplay.tv, sign up, and uh, enter to win the Free to Play uh, TV 670 giveaway. And like I said, you can check back every single day and do some stuff to increase your chances. You've got uh, seven days, eight hours left on the giveaway, so get over there. Go, 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 go. All right. We're going to talk about some damn games. We're just going to... Hawks, you're just going to rattle on all day. Hawk! What? Let's talk about gathering and exploration in Elder Scrolls Online. What do you say? Okay. All right. All right. Can do that. Winter. <laughs> he wasn't expecting that. <laughs> I like this Wildstar background though. I kind of feel like it's like I'm kind of in Tron slash uh, Blood Dragon for a second, and then all of a sudden it's Wildstar. <laughs> I like it. I'm gonna mm-hmm. keep that one for a while. It's a good video. All right. Let's uh, let's talk a little bit about the gathering and exploration in Elder Scrolls Online. So we've got some quotes, quotes from uh, the latest Q and A. That means question and answer. If you're <laughs> confused and have an IQ of thirty, <laughs> first up. They said, much like in previous Elder Scrolls games, there are no recipes or schematics. You must collect or learn from trainers in SO. Uh, There are multiple ways to create every craftable item in the game. Discovering the optimal mix of ingredients and additives uh, to make that perfect item is all part of the challenge of being a crafter. I got a question. First up, seriously. Um... What do you guys think? Of, what do you make of the? What do you make about the last part of that that statement there? Do you believe, do you think that that's going to be like cooking and alchemy specific, or do you think that that's across the board? Because uh, you think there's actually going to be multiple ways to create basically the same iron sword or breastplate? Yes. Oh. Yes, there is. Yes, you, you have. You have basic. You, what it is is you've got different blocks. You've got the two, the primary and secondary. Um, Memory. primary and secondary uh, ingredients and then you have additives and then you decide how much you add of each so you can really vary like <clears throat> each recipe even though it's you're making the same basic thing and it'll make higher quality and you know so on as you do it but yeah there's a lot of experimentation you can do it but that doesn't sound like it's the exact same thing like that sounds like you're saying different things with higher quality does that mean like a short sword versus a fine short sword or something it's like it'll have <clears throat> it'll have different sort of quality and it'll have different attributes to it, like added on, like, you know. Well, it's not know, really the same thing. Sword of, that makes sense. Yeah. Maybe. It's a short of? sword with varying quality. Yeah. Sorry, where was I? I'm I think we're confused. still just confused. I, think we've, I don't think we've answered a single thing. Okay. The race was last two minutes. Basically, you add different ingredients of different... Vari- of different uh, um, not all Qualities? of them can you add... Yeah, not all of them. Uh, you've confused me now. God damn it. Um, the, with some of them, you can't add varying uh, amounts of additives. I think it's the difference in some of them. But basically, the additives and how much you put on each one decides uh, what qualities the final thing has. So you're making a dagger, and does this dagger have some of this with a little bit of extra cold damage to it or something along that line? And that's the important thing, because I think a lot of people were wondering about, you know, was it whether going to be, were they going to actually be stat changes, or would it be sort of like, you know, a race or cultural change to the looks? Do we know if that's a part of it as well? Can you actually uh, craft things for specific sort of races to be more in line with the look, as well as stats? There are, yeah, there's, there's, racial, there's racial crafting, like you, you mm-hmm. can learn it. Um, you get racial crafting, of course, if you're your race. And then I think, off the top of my confused head, is that once you've unlocked the other um, faction, you can then learn like those uh, racials as well. I think don't I'm not absolutely sure on that, but I think that's it. In case anyone out there um, haven't hasn't played 
Skyrim are slightly confused. So no recipes or schematics. So you must collect um, or learn from trainers. Um, but that doesn't mean that there's no recipes at all, right? No, like in Skyrim, for instance, to make a potion, you'll just have to... You don't learn it from a person. You just put a flower and a bit of dust and then something else in there and see if it all comes out to make something. So it's kind, kind of... Kind of reminds me of like cooking in Guild Wars 2, for instance. Do we know if it's going to also um, sort of be like in, more, in other single player games where you just automatically get the recipe uh, for the item when you hit a specific skill level? Um, do we know exactly how those, those uh, recipes are going to be dished out, basically? No? And again, in something like Skyrim, you know, it's not necessarily a per level thing. It's that you make better stuff as your level goes up. Right, when like you hit a specific potion. skill level. That's what I'm saying. When you it increase the skill there. level, you it opens up new stuff for you. So, no, it doesn't I mean, open I guess, new stuff necessarily. It's like, it's like if I have a potion that will give you like 10 seconds of fire defense, as I level up, I'll make a potion that gives me 12 seconds of fire defense. I can make that thing in any level, but it'll just be better as I go on. I don't know if that's how they're doing it in Elder Scrolls Online, but that's kind of how it works in, in Skyrim. Maybe it'll be like that with... I can make a sword at any level. The sword I make when my uh, smithing is huge is going to be better than the one I make when it's low. Maybe that's how they'll do it. And, and that's not like what, I want to, what I'm trying to get at here is I'm wondering if, like, you know, and obviously we haven't played it, so don't really know, but I'm saying it's an, it sounds like an interesting way to do it, but at the same time, a big endgame draw for a lot of crafters in, in, certain, in some other games are having droppable schematics and things like that, you know, to trying to get those really super rare things and stuff like that. So do you guys, you know, what do you think about that as far as that they're not going to actually have those in the game? They're not going to be drops. So I don't know. Could they be shooting themselves in the fiddle a little bit or limiting themselves? I think the substitute for that in the game like Skyrim is making the components really hard to get, like whether it's dragon scales or, or a calcum or whatever, some sort of special rare component that you have to have to make the Uber sword. That, that and that can do. also bring in the social element. Oh my god, dare an MMO be social where you have to say like, <laughs> hey, Hawk, can you go out and get me that dragon scale? No, I've got to put my pants on. No, you don't. Tough. No, you don't. We're Can't making chest armor, not pant armor. I don't care. I'm still not. I've got to put my pants on to go get the stuff. Not doing it. Get yourself. Next up, he said, uh, you can master up to two crafting fields. Our intention is for the specialists to trade with one another. Uh, I make you a sword, you make me a breastplate. That makes for a healthy economy and gives every crafter the opportunity to find their specialized niche within the market. So pretty standard way, I think, of you know handling crafting is pretty good. Um, but what actually is very different in Elder Scrolls Online is there are only five professions. And that seems like, it seems like, you know, it's, I don't know. Does this make less sense when you can have forty percent of the professions in, on one character? It is kind of weird because you don't need like then three characters total to have everything. But like you're talking with uh, different racial recipes, if, if there's stuff like that, maybe that's maybe that'll be different. Like, I want to make a Khajiit sword as opposed to a Red Guard sword. I have to have one of each. So maybe that's a way that they'll make you want to have more characters and do more crafting. Because they yeah, really the, combine the is- a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, they have, and it's it's more that for each one you're gonna basically probably have to spend to master everything in it. It's spend a very long time in each one rather than having to spend slightly less time doing more professions. You're gonna end up doing more time on each profession if you want to master it to that extent. Uh, you're gonna have to really, really spend a lot of time, I think, on getting the top end stuff. Um, although, you know, as I said before, is a large bit about crafting is being able to um, upgrade top level items already. So you're going to spend a long time, but hopefully if for people who don't want to have to get every single type of uh, racial or, or possibility in the game, if you just want to be functional and be able to make something that's good and be useful, you're still going to be able to do that without driving yourself absolutely crazy. So hopefully they've got a good balance between. Yeah, and I guess for those out there who uh, may not know this, just what I'm what I'm what I'm sort of referring to is the fact that so the big difference that Tesso is doing is they've squeezed um, professions like you know tailoring, leatherworking, and armoring basically into one armor uh, profession. So they're 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 not you know having three or four like a lot of other uh, games do. So. And that's the thing, I guess you know. So I don't know. Do you think that do you think that having everything so compacted 
could it make it harder for them to bring in new professions down the road? Probably, but but the one nice thing about this is that uh, it means that every profession is useful to every type of character. Like normally, if you have a big heavy armor guy, you're not going to get the tailoring profession. You're gonna, if you're going to do any sort of armor thing, you're going to be the, the heavy metal armor thing. Whereas all five of them, yeah, you know, whatever it is, weapons and armor, potions, jewelry, and uh, food, you at least would have a reason to get that on on any character. All right, next up. Lore nerds are going to love this. Check this out. Definitely in, uh, in Elder Scrolls online fashion. They said, uh, we have approximately 300 collectible books that you can discover in the Elder Scrolls online. Once you find these collectible books, you can read them anytime you like. Uh, in addition, we have over 700 secondary tomes that you can find by investigating notes, journals, and bookshelves throughout the world. And the best part, none of them take up your valuable inventory slots. So they basically go into your magical fantasy kindle that amazon will be sponsoring no but actually when we saw that how awesome would it be so seriously how how awesome they, they need to make this an app they need to make like an ipad or a kindle app or both or some way for me to be sitting on the porcelain throne and do my reading right because that that's how awesome would it be to be able to read all this stuff like offline like you know when you're just sitting there just you know got nothing to do and there are there are lore sites out there that have all the books like transcribed from all the games so at the very least you can do that on your your iphone or something but but yeah to have an actual app for it would be cool too i would love that i would love to i would love to hawks are you doing like a pen and teller thing today what I said I would love to. I'd oh. like that too. Oh, okay. What? I mean, Elder Scrolls, I mean, there's tons of lore. Tons, tons, tons of lore, Elder Scrolls Online. Um, I mean, it makes sense. You don't want to be in the middle of a dungeon. Yeah, and, and, and one of the, what, what I really read. hope, though, about this, what, what, well, I'm, I'm going to be bitchy now. Is that okay? Oh. Right. What, what I really hope is that, it, is that the books and your little, uh, your little Elder Scrolls Kindle are account-bound and not character-bound. Because one thing that I always hate when I'm running through in, in Skyrim or something is I have, a, I have a, a series of books, like something that's got seven chapters. I've got like four of them on one character and three of them on the other, and there's no way to bring those together because it's completely different characters. So I hope that they make it so that I can it, it'll all be based on my account as opposed to individual characters. Uh, it should make more sense with that iPad app. Mm -hmm. Someone said in Skyrim we should have it's the Audible version of all the <laughs> there you go, go. gamebreaker.com slash audible or audible <laughs> whatever <laughs> you know what I mean uh, speaking of audible <laughs> audible.com slash gamebreaker we have a free 30 day trial and you're going to give yourself a free audio book we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, a little game called Neverwinter up here in a few minutes and guess what they've got the RA sound books on here yes they've got a bunch of the D, &D never winter books up on audible and they are kick ass you guys got to go check these out you could be listening to one of these for free as your free book right now you just got to go over to audible.com slash game breaker and sign up download the app put it on your iphone your ipad or whatever device you may be using and uh go ahead and search neverwinter and you'll find a bunch of these already salvaged i think there's actually more than this if you search dungeons and dragons you'll actually find more but the neverwinter series uh, by R.A. Salvatore is awesome. I mean, you can see, look at these are like 14, to, you know, these are like 11 to 14 hour books. Look at the ratings on them. They're all like super, super high ratings. Um, I read book one or listened to, and I have to say, I highly, highly, highly recommend it. I need to move on to book two. Book two is next on my list. I had a little thing called Game of Thrones in between there. So now back to Neverwinter. Check it what out. Was that, like 48 hours. It was like 38 hours. Work? I think it was, I think it was 38 <laughs> or 39 hours. Yeah, 39, really yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm Head on over to audible.com. Audible.com slash game breaker. Sign up, get a free 30 day trial, and get a free audio book today just by using that URL. All right. So finally, on the Elder Scrolls online front, uh, they talked a little bit about resources. They said resources such as ore and plants will repopulate over time, but they are not guaranteed to reappear in the exact same location they were before. So again, pretty standard stuff. I think the, um, I think part of the original question here that was, it was a Q and a, uh, part of the original question I think was a little bit dodged. 
there was nothing really said. I think the player asked about something about if multiple players farming the same node. They wanted some information about that. There wasn't any info. So have we heard anything about that? Do we know that? Do we know anything about multiple players farming a node? It's it's not been confirmed at all. No, it, it's... I actually went looking and I couldn't find anything. It's something I think I tried to get answered to a while back and it kind of hazy on the whole thing. So reply hazy, no. try again later. <laughs> and it, it's and it, I, I think I think like after Guild Wars two and when when they introduced that, everybody went, "Oh yeah, this makes complete sense. Why does anybody? Why did anybody not do it this way?" And although I think that it's good to have unique nodes in games where the sort of um, competitive that sort of competitive side of the PV where there's mm-hmm. sort of like um, node dominance is like important like say in even like sandbox sort of games. If, it, if it's just like nodes are out in the field and it's something that people pick I think having shared nodes just just makes sense there it almost feels like that's the standard that, to go for. Yeah know. I don't so think I think after, uh, yeah I think for players who definitely have watched this show I'm sure a lot of them have played Guild Wars too, and I, I don't I don't really want to go back to fighting over mineral nodes. That just seems lame at this point. Um, the, Not the only a thing PvE I could, standard server, no. The only thing I could see that could maybe be kind of interesting is if, it, like, if a node refreshes every half hour, like maybe the first guy to hit it gets you know two chunks of ore or two flowers, and then for the rest, next half hour you get one, so at least there's some sort of bonus for getting there first. That could be kind of a neat thing. To why, do you think, why do you think none of the game companies, why don't they ever go for procedurally generated resource nodes? I don't understand this. Like, why don't they have them move throughout the world? Like, Why don't they have like you know things like rare ores and things like that, like change over time and literally never happen in the same place. And not just a cycle. Like I'm talking about like real random map planets or random areas. I mean, it just, it would be so much cooler if it was just sort of like this underlying factor that you never really could calculate. We might, we might talk about some of that on Wednesday. Oh, (laughs) really? Mm. Yeah. Well, there you go. What would be coming up on Wednesday? Oh, I don't know. Maybe a new Wildstar show. The show, oh. no the show with no name. The show with no name. The show with no name. That's the title sorted. Today. The show with no name. <laughs> Wild on. <laughs> Don oh, kept dear. pushing for Wild on. I was like, dude, I can't say Wild no, on. No, that's... I can't. No, I can't. Gone not, Wildstar? That's not the one yeah. he was pushing for. Oh, which one was no, he pushing it... for? What was it? No, he, he's going for, he was sorry, for going for Gone Wild. Oh, Gone Wild. Yeah, it's like, I can't say that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, gone no. Wild. No. no. Furry's Gone Wild. No. No? Cat Chick's Gone Wild. Well, Scientist. Buddy. Scientist's Gone yeah. Wild. Makari Gone Wild. Yeah. No. Draken Gone Wild would be more appropriate, I, I guess. But... That. No. no. I'd rather call the show Shitstorm before I call it Gone Wild. <laughs> I believe that might be an attack. The shit's wrong. Watch out for that one. Mm-hmm. All right. Dodge. So, like I said, uh, I know you guys want an Elder Scrolls Online show. I do know that people have been asking for it. Um, I will pretty much say that I, I think it's a very much a 99% chance that, yes, it is coming. We just don't know when. We're hoping that the hype train really kicks off uh, with E3. Um, and hopefully that the news is really consistent after that. That's usually what we wait for on new shows is that we feel like the news flow is consistent enough that we can produce a really good show for an hour you know, every single week consistently. And right now they're still, they're, they're getting there, but uh, they're just, uh, like I said, they're getting there. We don't feel it. So there's some weeks we track it and we look at it and we think about, hey, could we have made a show this week? And there's a lot of weeks that we're just like, I don't think we could have made a show this week for Elder Scrolls Online or it would have been like 10 minutes and the internet would explode. So that's why we've held off, but hopefully soon. All right, so good news for uh, Guild Wars 2. ArenaNet are apparently crazy. Um... Scott, you spoke to uh, Colin Johansson about their current content schedule, correct? Um, yes, I did. I kind of got the impression Crazy, that man. this this latest two week update was just a special thing, as they wanted to get some features out quick. I no? didn't say that. I didn't have that impression at all. In fact, I thought something completely different. Are you so? <laughs> so that's what I'm getting. Are you expecting? Uh, you think players are expecting them to keep up with this schedule? Are you? I don't know if players are, but I think that. I, he talked. Colin. He, he talked about the amount of effort that what it is. They tried. That they noticed that people talked about Flame and Frost. Then you said, Flame and Frost come out. And people says this doesn't seem to be moving along very much. And you know, the story's moving a bit slow. And you know, it's not really that. 
<clears throat> invigorating. We liked what there is, but it didn't really seem to have a lot happening quickly enough. So they, at the time, just couldn't get get that content out quick enough to make it feel like it was progressing organically and that uh, it was progressing. So they basically completely changed their setup and their infrastructure, the way the way certain people actually work at Arena. Net. But they basically changed the roles that they take on. They changed uh, the way that they uh, structure everything to go to this two-week Did they remove idea. the uh, pants requirement at ArenaNet? That's the... I would think that would streamline things dramatically. So, yes, I have heard that they did, that there are many people running around around pantsless in Bellevue. Right now. now it makes sense. But anyway, if you put that much effort in restructuring and putting people in different jobs and driving them crazy like that, do you really do that just for like a three content patch, six week, two week turnaround cadence? Don't think so. And what they talked about was right now they're happy with it. They're not quite ready to commit to saying that this is going to be the way it is for the future entirely, but they're going to see how it goes. So I think they're going to see if they can keep this up. You think two, every two weeks? You think that two weeks is going to be their... their, their... That's crazy! I mean, that's... It is I crazy. Mean, it, it's crazy, but it really does make sense. We talk about it all the time about how players just burn, burn, burn through content like it's such a fast clip, so you know, more what... frequent updates maybe smaller updates. We probably can't expect like these huge big patches, but smaller content patches every two weeks. I mean, even on a small level, it's almost hard to believe that any MMO company could keep up with that kind of a schedule. It, it does seem mental. And I, one of the questions that I said, because what he said was when they thought of it, it, it made them feel like this, they'd, be, they'd be putting themselves out as this would be a game doing something and no other game is doing. And they're right. Like, Name the other MMO that gives you con new content every two weeks. No, there, I don't think there are any except for those imaginary ones. Uh, except for Eve, but that's just because people make their own every day. <laughs> that doesn't really uh, But it doesn't really get. So, like, no, there's, there's no... So, Connor says they want you to set out a, a cadence of con for content production that no one else was doing that sets the game apart again from the rest of the industry doing something that nobody's done before. I don't think that sounds like they're just doing that for a few, for a month or two. I think you're right. Jason, you're a huge Guild Wars 2 fan. Is this just, do you think this play, this, does this make the Jason Winter just drool as well as the player base? New content it makes me drool and, also makes, and you know, also makes me fear a little bit that they're going to just kill themselves doing it. Yeah. It's like, it's like when, um, when, when they had the first parts of the epic story, the living story in January and February, I was there wasn't a lot there, and I was kind of not all that pleased with that, but I saw how much they'd given us an update before that, November, or October, November, December, so it's kind of like, okay, this is like the extension of their sort of holiday, Christmas, New Year's break, so they slowed it down a little bit, and then they kind of ramped it up decently with the next couple months, and maybe that's the end they're doing it again. Maybe they're just, maybe now they're, they've got the better feel for it, and they've, they're kind of rested up from the whole, like, post-launch, and then the whole bunch of stuff that came after that. Maybe now they're ready to get back into high gear i can't wait to see i can't wait to see i, I did say to him i says when you first um introduced this idea to the team who cried uh, and they said yes there, there were a few there were a few people who were scared including me um so he was worried about it as well but they're giving it a go and they're going to see see how it goes from the looks of it i mean they don't, I'm, they don't want to come out right now and say yes every two weeks because, of course, as soon as they slip, people go, ah, you can't do it, can you? Yeah. Uh, sucks to be you, but um, did you talk but to them I think all? they're going to try and do it. Did, did, you, did you get to ask them at all about uh, beta testing that content? No, I didn't really go into that. Uh, <laughs> but I would say that if you're going to be beta testing on a two-week cadence, it's going to be, like, ex externally anyway. I mean, of course, they're, they're testing everything internally. Beta sprints. Big basis. <laughs> it's, um, honestly, it's it's mind-boggling. I mean, it's not like I mean th these last is it last three updates? Is it three the last three ones have all been within a two week cadence, two week intervals of new content. Yeah. It's not yeah. like they've been like it's not like they've been. Oh look, there's a new uh, dynamic event, and there's an NPC who'll now sell you on oh, no, a potted plants. 
it, it's there's a lot in there. There's like you know WVW stuff. There's PVE stuff. There's structured PVP stuff. There's lots. So uh, whether they can keep up at that cycle with that amount in each patch, I would be staggered. But just trying to do it that regularly is a big enough undertaking as it is. But as I said, if they've gone through so much to try and restructure to make it happen, I would be surprised if we, we're gonna if we, it's just gonna go away like soon. They may be setting the bar, so we shall Indeed. see. All right, next up, something we haven't talked about in quite a while is uh, 38 Studios. You guys remember that company? Kurt Schilling, MMO, single player game. Oh, yes. Belly Up, company imploded. State of Rhode Island, taking them to court, all that good stuff, lawsuits all over the place. Uh, well, now it seems that the state of Rhode Island is now selling the uh, Amalur IP. Uh, I don't know. Do you guys think there's any uh, faint, uh, is there a sliver of hope for Amalur fans out there, for gamers? Um, that, that somebody may pick this IP up and run with it? You know, it's, it's, it's like Kurt always going on about how he was so close to getting an investor for it. But what happens, of course, is you're an investor, you've got millions of dollars, you come in and look at what they got, and you're not willing to spend your millions of dollars with them. So he never landed that investment. So you think it's the same kind of thing. That anybody who might be curious is going to come in and sniff around, see what they've got, see what they got in terms of lore, see what they got in terms of how, how done it is. And get an idea of you know how easily you're going to be able to put a team together to finish it. And are you going to pay tens of millions of dollars for that? I that's tough to say. It's hard to say. Man, they got a lot of heavy hitters. They got a lot of great art assets, and apparently they're pretty far into it. I mean, Michael Packer over uh you know he does a like a vidcast over on um what was it game trailers uh, Pack Attack, but he uh he he said something I think uh, that he thought the uh, the IP this is a while back I don't know how long ago but he said that he thought the IP was worth about twenty million dollars that was back in August he said it was mm -hmm. worth twenty million it's yeah. worth whatever anybody's going to pay for it yeah. Scott you want to go have this is what it comes down to um if you give me ten minutes I've got to check down the back of my sofa and the back right. of my fridge I've got oh, at least so twenty eight cents over here oh, we go okay. thirds all right we're we go thirds all right let's go on okay. um. So, like I said, in more grim news for 38 Studios, also the, the 38 Studios versus Rhode Island, the court case has begun this week on that whole debacle uh, with all 14 defendants trying to get the case thrown out of court for the third time. Good luck with that. Yes. So Good luck the, with that. Uh, Rhode Island is accusing them of hiding 38 Studios' financial problems. Uh, this is going to be interesting to see how this uh, unfolds. Um, I think the unfortunate thing here is I wonder, you know, uh, you know, I wonder if it's, I think this is going to leave a really bad taste in a lot of, probably see a state support like a brand new game company ever again, especially an online one. They knew it was a big risk, but now, man, I could see any politician just like not wanting to touch something like this with a 10 foot pole. It's like, this is not somewhere I want to go with my money. Yeah, it's, it's unfortunate that, especially to, to, so say politicians who don't have a deep knowledge of what it is that they're talking about because <laughs> that never happens um so if they don't really know what they're talking about all they'll all they'll see is oh well i don't want to happen to us what happened to rhode island and so it could be it could be something that that's that's an issue but one would hope that uh anybody sensible would be looking at each individual uh sort of um, deal looking at the details of it and seeing whether it's worth it on its own merits rather than just well, I hear MMOs are d dangerous, so I'm not going near it. But I heard an amazing statistic. You never can tell. Week. I heard an mm -hmm. amazing statistic. Check this out. In the, in the state of California, I believe it was the state of California. I think it was. Um, the last seven governors, right? Out of the last seven governors of the state of California, four of them, more than 50%, have gone to prison. Not uh, wow. not court, not paid a fine, <laughs> not had trial and got let off. Four out of the last seven went to prison. And I know who one of them isn't, so I don't think Arnold's like, gone to prison. Arnie's still out <laughs> at the moment. So, so five, four isn't that amazing? That, that like that blew my mind. I'm like, that's amazing. Like that's just think about that for you a mean, second. Just think about you mean, it. Do you mean there's corruption in politics? No, I wasn't saying that. I was just merely stating a fact that they went to prison. 
He could have just been doing drugs like like Mario Cobo or something, you know, something simple like that. So is it is it the fact that did something wrong that surprised you, or the fact that they were a- actually able to get them into prison that surprised you? Maybe a little bit. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard too that Rhode Island is not exactly the cleanest state. Even as I, those go, I completely uh, move myself away from the litigious uh, state of Rhode Island and anything that they might want to throw at, uh, at us legally. Because we do, state. do what it have it anything to do with Thirty Eight Studios. Thank you. Hmm? All right, it's been a rough week for Neverwinter. And I want to talk about Neverwinter, but really quick, I want to tell you guys about Squarespace. Do you guys know about Squarespace? Have you guys checked out Squarespace? Either of you? I have not. Please tell us I about have, Squarespace. I have heard of its work. You have? No, it, it, it's, mm-hmm. it's unbelievable. I used Squarespace back in the day, like years ago, and it's, it is, they've, they've got this new engine. So basically, what Squarespace is, it is a way to launch a website. And it is seriously the future of launching websites because all that deploying things on servers, um, knowing HTML and code and CSS, like, no, none of that. You don't need to know any of that. So... It is awesome. We're building the new Game Breaker Nation site and another website on Squarespace. I started using it for the Game Breaker Nation site and I was blown away by how awesome the new platform is. Like, I'm gonna show you some of the stuff. Like it's just, oh, that's the, one. It's the style mode. Hang on, let me go into, nope, I don't want style mode. Where's it going? Hang on, that's the style mode. Hang on, go back home. Let me go into the Xbox show style mode. Manage my page. <laughs> Xbox go home he stands up and runs up no because every, everything in, uh, on Squarespace is like all done with like basically point and click mouse which is awesome so if you don't know anything about building a website and you're kind of a noob you can just do these all you start with a template which which are unbelievable they're, they're super kick ass including even a, a full online store which is never easy to deploy I don't know if you guys have ever tried to like to actually deploy an online store like a shopping cart with like actually click it's not easy um, it's all built in and all this stuff is like, you can just, it's really intuitive. It's like drag and drop stuff. You can change everything. Um, but what's awesome also about the brand new platform is that they have also made all the functionality in there. If you are a programmer, if you do understand how to get, and you really want to get under the hood, um, from your website and do a lot of custom work, they now give you the ability to do all that stuff. You can really dig in there. Um, it's just awesome. I mean, my, the site was up and running. I didn't have to deal with, I didn't have to deal with, you know, uh, domain stuff and like, you know, server packages, they handle everything. You pick a plan, your monthly plan, it's up and running in like minutes, minutes. And then you just kind of go through and, you know, start changing all your text and going through your pages. And, and it's, it's, it's unbelievable. Um, go over to squarespace.com. We've got an offer going right now on your checkout. You're going to use offer code GAMEBREAKER5. Use that for your promo code on your checkout. Offer is good for first purchases and new accounts. You're going to get 10% off. 10% off your first purchase. And go check it out. If you guys want to make a website, personal website, blog, guild website, it is the way to go for guild websites. It's awesome. Seriously, check it out. You're going to see two new Game Breaker sites being completely built on Squarespace. It's that good. Squarespace.com. Use offer code GAMEBREAKER5. All right, so talk about some Neverwinter. A little free-to-play game, having a little bit of trouble this week, but don't worry, it's still in beta. Can we talk about this for a second? <laughs> um, so there's a lot of issues we're going to talk about in a second, but seriously, let me, what do you guys think? I mean, it's, it's everybody can play it. Uh, it's, it's fully open. There's cash involved. There's, a, there's cash involved. There's a cash shop. They're taking your money. They're, you know, buy stuff that you're totally good with that. Um, I don't know. Is it really in beta? Like, is it? There's no wipes. There's no wipes. There's so, no wipes. They're not wiping any character wipes. No rollbacks. Nothing. Well, rollbacks. Well, except when well, there was a rollback. Yes, there was a rollback. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cracks like a not beta then it's not beta. and this, this is the new thing for free to play games right is that they kind of just like go into open beta and they just sort of like stay there some of them do I mean Firefall is the other one we think of but you know, that doesn't seem but as really big a thing beta. <laughs> yeah yeah true yeah 
it has changed so much, like, mm-hmm. and continues to. That really is a game that's in beta. Whereas Neverwinter is a game that seems to be. It's Launched. not completely locked down. Kind of, I mean, yeah. I mean, they announced, they, announced, they announced today, like, you know, they're adding sort of right size content and things into it soon. Uh, so there's still content being added to it. However, for. The, there are MMOs that have launched at this state and worse as an actual launch before on a regu- regular occasion. It feels so, launched. Yeah. To, to gamers, it, it feels launched. I know to them, they, yeah. you know, they, it's whatever. I'm, I'm here, neither here nor there. Whatever. Let's move on. Um, basically, this week, though, multiple exploits and bugs hit Neverwinter um, this week. So bosses were being uh, one shotted and farmed. And the big one was there was a bug in the auction house that allowed players to use an exploit. Uh, they could exploit their way to free astral diamonds, which is a currency in the game. Um, and although the bug was was found in the offending players, they were, they were dealt with. Uh, the damage to the economy meant that the game had a, had a seven hour rollback. They did a seven hour, but it's beta. So don't worry about it. It's not, it's not beta. Yeah, it was the. Yeah, the <laughs> The exploit itself was quite mind-boggling. It really was. It wasn't even, like in some games, there's been sort of dupe exploits where you'd have to send it through bids and all this sort of stuff and get back through mail. This one was just basically, let me type out all the money that I want to have. <laughs> this is fun. And I was told, I, don't, I haven't been able to verify this, but uh, I was told by uh, someone who worked with the exam, he said, oh, yeah, that dupe. They had exactly the same one for Star Trek Online like about a year ago, so that's uh, impressive. Um, so it's it's amazing that he got through because honestly, I'm not going to actually say what it is, though I don't think it makes that much difference. But I'm not well, going to say what it is. But isn't it's, it fixed? Yeah, yeah I well, hope so. <laughs> Supposedly, it's like negative, like negative <laughs> values or something. Like you negative just put value negative value in and you get it back, yeah. And it was like, wow. So it was. It wasn't just like a lot. It was. It wasn't just like quite a lot of money that we've paid maybe you've seen in like you know other exploits it was huge like complete economy destroying sort of amounts the people were just sitting there typing away making up just as much money as they felt like how um, has the economy so, bounced back now with this with the seven hour rollback did it pretty much fix the economy issues well, well it's i mean it's cert- certainly they had to do the rollback I saw some people complaining about, oh, they had to do rollback. It's like, well, you could either have the rollback or just don't game. ever bother going to go to any auction house ever again. Um, yeah, so they had to do it. Um, whether, I think there's going to be there's some ramifications, but it certainly fixed the the impending doom of it that, that, that it had created. Uh, was it last Sunday that, that they did the, the rollback of blue? But yeah, it had to be done because, oh my God, that would have been bad if they didn't let that carry it. So, not a yeah. good week for the Neverwinter at all. Uh, they, did, uh, so they did the rollback and players did receive a package of items um, and an apology. So they, they got, you know, it took them a while to get it, to get it sort, all sorted out, but they got it sorted. Um, nonetheless, time to unsubscribe, right? Oh yeah. yeah. Mm. Mm. Guess not. All right. So, yeah. uh, so they have a public test chart coming. Further, uh, further confirmation that the game is actually launched. Announcement of a public test chart, uh, which is totally needed for an MMO. So that's good news. Um, Jason, you've been you've been playing a bunch of Neverwinter. I know you were looking really a lot forward to it. I don't know if we touched back. I on was. But I haven't played it like in the last two weeks just because of all the stuff that's been going on. It's like every time, and every time it's just like, I want to get into it, I'll just check Twitter real quick, and I'll be, they'll be like, oh, the main is still going on. We'll be online again shortly. I'm like, oh, okay, well, whatever. It seems like almost every time I'm trying to play, it's down. It's like like almost SimCity-esque at this point. So, I'm actually, I'm, and, I, I, and, I, I, and I've realized, too, I've, I've forgotten, too, that I don't really like playing in beta, so I probably won't play again for a oh. while. Yeah, <laughs> so, I mean, you're in beta, so... I know a lot, I know a lot, of, a lot of people have, like were saying that they burned, a lot of players have burned through content and stuff. I've been playing very casually. I actually have been having a decent amount of fun in it. There's a few things I don't mm-hmm. love about it, but there's actually a lot of stuff I actually do like about it. Um, I want to get back in to do some more Foundry stuff, which I think would be... It's going to be see where it goes and see what people are creating. Yeah, so I need much. to finish my, my quest that I was working on. Yeah, 
there's a there's there's a lot of stuff there for a free to play game. I mean, I definitely think that they're raising the bar as far as free to play goes in the MMO scene because it's 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 got a ton of stuff. And I know, like I said, I I, I know there's a players watching Twemo right now because you guys are the hardcore, the hardcore, and you're just like I burned through all the content. There's nothing left to do, but there's a lot going on in that game. So but there is it's a solid it's it's got its issues like you know. It's got issues like any game in beta, as he mm-hmm. tries to keep a straight face as he says that. Um, <laughs> but it is a solid game, and there's plenty, there's plenty to enjoy in it. There really is. And as I said, that they've already announced they're going to be adding more to it. They're, they're saying that I can't remember the name of the area they're adding, but it's going to be raid-sized PvP and PVE content going into the open beta uh, soon. So th- there's more being added to it too. So soon. It's a good game. Soon. All right, some other really, really quick news to cover. Uh, Final Fantasy XIV will be relaunching on August 2nd on PC and PS3. So that is not good. 27th. 22nd. Sorry, 22nd. Uh, 27th. 7th. Why do I have August 2nd here? I, have a... I don't know. I don't know. Producer's fired. Fired. <laughs> You're fired. And you I can't have it. your name either. Tough. Yes. I have, I have sorry, but. So that is the 27th confirmation of Final Fantasy relaunch. So looking forward to that one. And uh, Dry- Dragon's Prophet, which is a free-to-play MMO coming from SOE. They're publishing it. That's uh, open beta is kicking off May 30th. So you might want to mm-hmm. mark that on your calendars if you guys want to check that. Anyway, anybody looking forward to this? Anybody played it? It's got dragons. I've played it. I did. Played yeah, it. I've, played I've, played it. I've, I've played it as well. Yep. We have been get to actually fly a dragon, but I'm sure that's in there somewhere. Yes, you can. I've flown a dragon. It's something uh-huh. like We've been streaming it. Uh, Gareth Armour and Chris Rainey have been streaming it, um, and we did an interview. Uh, they did an interview. Sorry, Gareth did an interview with Todd Carson, the uh, senior producer on it. That's up on site. But no, it looks fun. It's quite fun, actually. Combat's quite fun. You can do combos and stuff. It, it's, it's if you if you're a collector, if you people one of those people who like collecting pets, dragons of all sorts, and and the fact you can combine abilities, it's a fun game. It is. Check it out. So May 30th, mark that one on your calendar. May 30th, open beta. Jason Winter, follow him on the Twitter at Winter Informal. Go to Winter Informal. I'm follow. writing all sorts of things for all sorts of places, so that's the best place to keep up with it all. Keep up with it at Winter Informal. Uh, Mr. Hawk, Black Hawk Down, from editor in chief of I'm there, singular. Follow him on the Twitter at Jaramore. That's J A R I M O R. I got that right. Yes, and you can follow me at Gary Gannon. Follow Gabriel TV at Gabriel TV. And don't forget to go over free to play.tv if you're looking for a new game this weekend. Go check out the free to play.tv. And yes, we will be streaming more on that channel as well. We got the Twitch channel, free to play TV. You guys can go favorite that and uh, keep a lookout. And uh, have a great weekend. Have a great long weekend. Have a great memorial weekend, fellas. You new too. shows. New shows. See y'all next week. Thanks for so much for watching. We'll see you next week. Well, this weekend, MMO.